This is the right side organ chamber. From the floor, it was over four stories high. As the organ pipes were divided into the left and right side, we had stereo sound already back in the 1920s. The gingerbread look wasn't overdone. You can see how well it all fit together to make the fox what it was. We'll now go to the balcony to look at the left side organ chamber. From this point of view, you have a better look at the way the organ chamber was constructed. The left and right side were identical design. What we're now going to do is enter the chambers and look at some of the hundreds of pipes there and see how they were installed. It was very cramped back there. Organ enthusiast Jim Crank will now describe the pipes as we see them. Most of the Wurlitzer organ's magnificent solo voices were installed in two chambers on the right-hand side of the proscenium arch, the orchestral and the solo. Shown here is the tibia closet, the wooden pipes with the stoppers poking out of their tops, and the powerful tuba mirabilis, the single loudest reed in the organ. The base of the tibia closet in the solo chamber up above and the very interesting brass saxophone shown here right behind the shutters of the organ. Since the Wurlitzer's pipes only played at one volume, this is the means of varying the sound level in the theater. These pneumatically operated shutters and two of the regulators that control air pressure to the pipes in the chests above them, and one of the two marimba harps installed on this mighty Wurlitzer. The Fox Theater stage was 64 feet wide. Here's how it looked from the projection booth 200 feet away. Now it's time to leave the theater and go out on Market Street. We'll leave through the front doors and look at the marquee. This is the last time the lights and neon will be on for a show. Yes, some of the neon doesn't work, but it still looks good. The last show was put on by the Peninsula Volunteers. It was early evening, and we'll come back later when the crowds are arriving. It's difficult for us to take this last look. Here we see workers taking parts of the organ out the main stage door. The new owner was given 10 days in which to remove the organ in place of the five weeks he'd been promised. A small crowd was on hand to watch the official start of demolition by a crane with a gold painted wrecking ball. The press was present. We don't understand the reason for the tassels and the three young ladies for such a sad event. Maybe it was because demolition would start with the ladies lounge. The theater was offered to the city of San Francisco for $1,050,000. But under the leadership of Mayor George Christopher, turned it down. A tremendous loss to San Francisco. Here, the wrecker starts his job on the Fox. Demolition took almost six months, and the wrecker claimed to have lost money on the job. Look what San Francisco lost. Next to go was the projection booth and grand lobby. This is what's left of the once beautiful grand lobby. Here is the grand staircase.
This shot shows the upper balcony and the auditorium ceiling from a large hole made into the upper balcony. We can also see the right side wall of the inside auditorium. A glimpse of the beautiful ceiling piece. Here, as the crane knocks out the upper parts of the lobby, we see one of the actor's masks and the work of many artists being destroyed. A close-up of the mask and the sad, pleading look it seems to have. The main lobby and the auditorium are now gone. All that's left is the front of the theater on our left and the stage area with offices on the top of the stage. The stage was torn down next, leaving only the front of the theater standing to the very end. To leave the front standing during the process of tearing down the rest of the theater made the act of passing the place a painful ordeal. One of the last roof beams. Here at the end stands the theater front, still a reminder of the greatness that was the fox. It resisted the iron ball to the very end. A few years later, to beautify Market Street, San Francisco made all the movie palaces tear off their front marquees and signs. At least the fox didn't have to suffer this indignity. The end came on August 12, 1963, sometime around midnight. This was after the wreckers worked all day trying to pull it down. Now was the time for the fox to take its last bow. The mighty fox Wurlitzer will now give San Francisco a final salute. As the organ lowers into the pit, we hear the last sounds from the Fox Theater. <laughs>